Joe D. Um, I've done a couple of videos prior to this, and um, again, it was the first and second attempt, and uh, I kind of rushed everything. So I'm hoping this one will be a little bit smoother, a little bit more uh, informative, and a little bit more detailed. So let's get started. So um, just so you know, let me preface everything I'm talking about in this video. But just so you know, I'm not a shipwright. I'm not a boat builder. I am a carpenter, however. Excuse me. I am a carpenter, however, and um, I have built uh, boats. I've been, I've been, um, I've been working with plans. I say for the last 40, 40 50 years, and um, as far as uh, as far as my experience is concerned, I'm a retired carpenter of New York City, and I worked in a cabinet shop. I was a woodworker. I built furniture professionally. Um, and I did, I pretty much did everything regarding uh, carpentry. I mean, at the sheetrock roofs. The only thing I never did really was uh, um, foundation work, you know, forms and stuff. But pretty much I've done just about everything. We really, I really focused on the uh, woodworking and the cabinet making. That's really where my uh, field of expertise is. So anyway, with that said, um, I... Uh, I had built a couple of boats. So my first, one of my first boats that I built was an eight foot dinghy. So let me, so, so basically what I did was I got, went online, you know, and I'm not the most, um, I'm pretty cheap. So what happened was I found, I found a set of drawings for a, a 10 foot dinghy, but I had an eight foot, I had a boat with an eight foot six beam on it. And I was going to stick this thing on the back of the boat and go cruising around and I have a dinghy for whatever. But I just didn't want the dinghy to hang over on each side of the boat. So I cut it down to eight feet, which was a big mistake. Anyway, in any event, I, um, again, this was my first boat that I ever built. And um, I wanted it strong. This thing was built with quarter-inch plywood from Home Depot. And um, what I did was I got some 18-ounce glass and epoxy and I put a couple of layers, two, three layers on the outside and three layers on the inside of this thing. And I don't know if you know anything about fiberglass, but 18 ounces is pretty thick, it's pretty heavy. Anyway, this boat was supposed to be 50, 60 pounds when completed. And um, when I got through with it, it was easily triple that. So that boat I gave away, I don't have any pictures of it. Don't ask for pictures. It, it wasn't my finest hour, but I will say this, it was a great learning process. I learned a lot of stuff. I made a lot of mistakes. I spent a lot of money on epoxy and fiberglass. And it wasn't, it didn't go to waste because I did learn a lot. I did. I learned a lot from it. And um, which I thought was pretty good. I mean, listen, you got to start somewhere. You know, what's the old expression? Even Mario Andretti, the great Formula One race car driver, had to back out of his driveway for the first time at one point in his life. So that was pretty much my... Uh, backing out of my driveway experience on the first boat. In any event, um, let's see. My uh, second boat was a 19-foot um, down east style boat. So what happened was I had a book, again, I'm not the most extravagant person on the planet. I, um, I bought a book, John Gardner's Small Craft, and in the book, uh, I say about three quarters of the way through. He has a 19 foot work boat. It's got a round chine on it. It doesn't have sharp chines. It's got a curved chine. So it's a semi displacement hull. And what I did was I copied the lines from the book and I built that and that was cold molded. I don't know if you're familiar with cold molded, but basically it's, it's, I, um, again, I'm not the most extravagant person. Just give me a second. What I did with that boat was I um, I had an old deck that I tore apart. <laughs> All right, you can laugh if you want. I had an old deck that I tore apart, and I took the uh, five quarter by six um, decking, and I pushed it through my bandsaw, and I made uh, I made a uh, quarter inch by whatever five and a quarter inch um, strips out of it, and I cold molded the hole with that. So when you cold mold something, I ran the, I, I I made the stations, I set it up. And I stripped the uh, mold with the stations. I stripped it longitudinal, meaning front to back. I stripped it. And 
what I did was I glued the second layer on top of that on a diagonal, on a 45 degree diagonal. So it was pretty much like this. So when the whole, when everything dried, when after everything was said and done, this thing was one solid piece of plywood. It was solid. And um, I, I, I built that, I bought a 90 horsepower motor, I bought a used motor and I tried to get it running and all of that and I took it apart and I rebuilt it and this and that and needed to see the iron all this other bullet. And I ended up, you know, and I just gave it away. And I bought a brand new motor. You know, you got to figure, you're out in the water. You know, the last thing you want is something that's suspect. It's not 100% reliable. So I ended, I ended up giving the motor away. The boat we used for a couple of years, I bought a brand new 90 horsepower Mercury motor. It was pretty good. It ran pretty good. 90 horse on a 19 foot. Everybody was saying, you need at least 150, 200 horse. No, not really. It's a semi-displacement hull. It's not designed to go fast, you know. So what it does is it planes and it displaces water as it goes through the water. Like a sailboat, it pushes the water off to the side as it goes through. So it's only, it, it's, it's not designed to go fast. So you don't need a lot of horsepower for, for, a, motor, for a, a hull in that configuration. In any event, it was fine. I, I, this, this, this thing was really, uh, it was really pretty good. I, I really couldn't complain. We loved it. Me and my wife, we really loved this boat. And we, the, the Regal, I had a, a cabin cruiser that you know, we had bought. That became a boat aminium, and we hung out. We used to go to the marina Friday nights. We'd spend the night Saturday all day, and then Sunday afternoon we'd come home. So we'd every weekend during boating season we were on vacation and we we're on the boat, and we had waterfront property, and it was fucking awesome. We really enjoyed it. And um, but that boat was the go-to boat. We took that boat everywhere, up and down the Hudson River. We were on the Hudson River at uh, Havistro Marina at the time. And we, we had a lot of fun. We would, again, we were up and down. We took it everywhere. It was really a good, you know, even though it was a small boat, it was pretty seaworthy considering. Um, anyway, we cannibalized that boat when I decided to build this uh, 30 foot. Actually, it's a 28 foot boat with a two foot swim. I incorporated the hull into the swim platform. So the hull actually extends to under the swim platform. So you got a 28 foot boat, two foot swim platform. Now we're talking a 30 foot boat where well, the hull is, is, is actually 30 feet. So we, um, I, I went online and I found this guy, um, Tom Lathrop, Blue Jacket Boats. I don't, I, I don't know what's the story. He was pretty old at the time when I bought the uh, set of drawings. So I don't know, I, I, I tried going on his website and it's, it's not a up and it's not operational anymore, and he's not responding to anybody's uh, texts, emails, or uh, actually there was a forum that he had, and he's not responding to any of that. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's uh, if he passed. I'm not sure. If he did, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, he really, I really, you know, was very impressed with the drawing on his uh, on his hull. So what I did was. I needed a set of drawings for his hull. His hull was kind of like a semi-displacement hull. It was a 12 degree dead rise, which was really the, 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 the pitch of the bottom of the boat. And um, it had a hard shine and it was really a planing boat and it was designed to be very, very light. Now he claimed a 28 foot boat completed, right? Before you put any stores on it, meaning groceries, you know, electronics, um, gasoline, water, whatever, you know, he's claiming this thing needs to be like 2,500 pounds. But, um, to be honest with you, when I ordered the plywood for this thing, the crate came in and it was 2,200 pounds, the weight of the crate. So you got to figure if you used 80% of the wood, you got to figure 20% for waste. You're still talking 18, you know, hundred pounds, maybe 1900 pounds. You know, just just for the plywood, just for the hull. Forget about the superstructure. Forget about the decking. Forget about all the accoutrements, meaning the sink, the toilet. You know, um, it's the shower, the the hot water heater, the air conditioner. You know, all that other all that other stuff. I, I don't think he um, had planned for any of that stuff on his boat. That's why it was supposed to be so light. I think he was talking, you know, maximum forty five hundred pounds, and he was saying. A 90 horsepower motor works well with this particular hull that he designed. So hence, I got the 90 horsepower motor, and that 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 sealed the deal when I saw that, you know. So, but to be honest with you, I'm thinking my boat's going to be, I don't know, easily 4,000 pounds, 
without the stores. So I'm thinking maybe we'll, we'll try it for a season. It's not completed yet, but we're going to try it for a season um, with the 90. And if the 90 is not up to speed, that's a pun. We're going to go with 150 horse. I'll trade this thing in. It's, it's, it's only got like 100 hours on it. So I'll trade this thing in and I'll get a, I get 150 horse. And I'll, you know, do the rigging and everything myself. So, and that's where we're at. So basically what happened was how I got started. Okay, so let's go to chapter two. You like that I hear in the chapter, right? So, okay, so chapter two, how I got started. So I, I um, in my backyard, I set up a deck, was 12 feet wide by 30 feet long. It's espresso. I need the buzz. It was uh, 12 feet wide by 30 feet long, and then I, I framed out um, a tent. I actually framed it out. It was just like a like a regular uh, house with a pitched roof, and I trust everything with two. I mean, I, I framed it all out with two by twos, and I trust it. And um, we covered it with a top. I bought a top online. And I, again, I only needed this thing for a couple of years. It didn't need to be a permanent structure. So, you know, nothing was built, you know, permanently, you know, and I'm hoping to have this thing down by December, January. And then, uh, so I can uh, draw a top over the boat and then continue on the inside. The inside is pretty much a lot of it, a lot of it inside the hull, inside the um, cabinet, inside the decking area is pretty much done. I, I'm gonna have to edit all of this out. I don't know, maybe I had too much espresso. So let's just go to my, um, so I got gyp notes here, just so you know, I can't remember shit. And if I don't look at this, I forget, I, I, I lose my train of thought and I don't know where I'm going. Okay, so I put up the tent. We already established that. So I put up a tent um, and I had to make a set of horses. And uh, so I made a set of horses to set out of plywood and uh, two by six. And um, I made it the height of my table saw this way when i'm all done with the horses it's not that i can't use them i can use them with the table saw god forbid i got something along i want to push through the snow i need a set of horses i need a horse to uh, hold it up at one end or another in any event so i made up that and then we scoffed i scoffed the the plywood and he's calling for an eight to one scoff now on the um 19 foot down east boat that i built from the john gardner book I scoffed everything 12 to 1, but he's saying 8 to 1 was fine with plywood. Now, this boat is stitch and glue. The John Gardner boat, the 19-footer that, that I spoke about earlier, that was um, cold molded, you know, and I explained what cold molded is. So if anybody has any issues, just rewind the video, go back and take a look and see what I said. But anyway, this thing is stitch and glue. So... Basically, you get a piece of plywood, you add another piece of plywood, you drill a couple of holes and you put a cable tie or you put a piece of wire and you tighten it up. After you get the whole thing assembled, then you spot glue it, take all your cable ties or your wire or everything out, and then you fillet and glass. You do the inside and the outside, and then that's it. And pretty much you got your hull. I mean, that really, not only, that, that saves a lot of time. That's also pretty strong. You know, it's, it's kind of like a unibody, like cars. Years ago, cars were built with a chassis and they put a body on top of it. Now everything is unibody and they're much stiffer. They're a lot stronger and they're much lighter. And that's pretty much the deal. I, I feel that's pretty, again, I'm not an engineer, but I pretty much feel that um, stitch and glue is kind of like unibody it's very light and it's very strong it's also a very quick method you know to get your hull up and running you know you don't have to go through all the fairing and planning and this and that but it's just a lot less work boat goes together a lot quicker um anyway so we scoffed it so i got a video that i made and i showed how i actually scoffed everything so I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze that in here somehow. We'll, uh, we'll get to it. So what I did was after I scoffed everything, I, um, I built the whole stands and he's calling 12 degrees for the bottom, 12 degrees again, you know? 
So which is pretty shallow. It's not really a, a deep V boat. So a deep V boat to deal with that is just so you know, and I know I'm going off track right now, but a deep V hull is really good in the chop. It's very good in the chop because it slices through the water. Unfortunately, it's very inefficient. You use a lot of gas. You need a lot of power to push it. But if you have, if money is no object and you need to go somewhere, you get yourself a nice fishing boat with a deep fitting and you can go anywhere with that thing. Just bring a lot of gas when you go. Um, the other thing too is, uh, let's say I built the stands 12 degrees and then we started assembling the hull. Again, it was three quarter inch plywood for the hull bottom and it was half inch for the sides. And um, after that was all stitched and I, I'll, I, I'll, I got a bunch of pictures, I'll squeeze them in here. And after that was all stitched and glued and epoxied, I, uh, yeah, so what I did was I started on the, um, I put, actually installed the strings. Now, hear me out now. Again, I'm not an engineer. You know, I've been in the business. I'm coughing my whole life. And I kind of have a basic understanding of engineering. I know how things, you know, I know how things are engineered and how well and how strong they need to be. I get a basic knowledge of engineering. Again, I'm not an engineer, so don't, uh, you know, don't, stick, don't, don't point your finger at me and start accusing me of, of anything here. But any, in any event, um, he's talking quarter inch stringers, you know. So what I did with my quarter inch stringers, I made them like uh, TJIs or a truss um, joist I beam. And pretty much what I did was, you got your quarter inch plywood here. We'll use this as an example. I'll, get, I'll use this. You got your quarter inch plywood, and I put a piece of, um, piece of one by two across the top. I dadoed it out, or I notched out the center of the two, and I, I let it in, and I glued it in with epoxy. And I did the same with the bottom, right? And I made this thing the full length. And I set it in the hull and I glassed it down to the hull, right? And what he's saying is quarter inch string is, right, running longitude, meaning front to back, quarter inch string is every seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches. You know, usually you got a boat that's 30 feet. You may have four strings. You got two that, that the engine mounts on and you got two out that are outside of that. And then you got the side of the boat, actually. You got the whole sides. But he's calling every seven inches. So you got a lot of uh, you got a lot of uh, uh, material there. A lot. Of, it's, it's very very strict, stiff. It's um it's a, it's what he called a torque box. If anybody is into cars and they're familiar with what a torque box is, a torque box is basically like when you take like a U channel, right? Like the old Ford chassis from the old Model Ts. They were U channels and they were very flexible. And what they would do is they would box them in and they would, they would, they would weld in a, a piece and make a box out of it. And even though it was light gauge metal, you know, for a, for a, a, a frame, it was very, very structurally strong, very strong, very stiff and very light. So it's pretty much what he's made, what he is using. So once you put your deck down and you glue your deck down on top of this and glue it into the sides, the whole bottom becomes a giant, you know, eight and a half feet by 12 foot, um, by um, 20 something foot, 28 foot, actually 30 foot, forgive me, a 30 foot torque box. And this thing is ridiculously stiff. It's very, very stiff. So at that point, after I got the stringers done, I, I inserted the, um, I inserted the foam. I bought the foam from Home Depot. Again, he, uh, him, I went online, I did a lot of research and a lot of people are using this stuff. I don't know if it's open to closed cell. I think it's, I think it's closed cell foam. I'm pretty sure. And what I did was I, I, um, I stuffed it in there as tight as I could. I put as much in there as, as much as I could. And I estimate that I have like 6,000 pounds of flotation foam in there. So if this boat exceeds 6,000 pounds in weight and it gets swamped, it'll sink. But if the boat weighs 4,500 pounds and it gets swamped, it's not going anywhere. It's not sinking because it's got 6,000 pounds of flotation on the, you know, under the floor. So it is not sinking. So even if the, even if the, the hull for some reason gets breached or the floor, the, the sole of the boat gets breached and water gets in to the uh, talk box area or under the, under the sole, it's got all the foam in there. So, it, again, it's not going to sink. And that was, that was really, um, 
another cool thing I really, really like about this. You know, did I lose storage because I couldn't store anything under the floor? Yeah. But what are you going to do? Safety first. And don't forget that. That's important. Excuse me. Got to finish the espresso. 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 I don't know. Last shot. All right. Next. Where are we? Uh, let's see. Oh, so now now I had, um, so at this point, I put the foam in it. I, I laid the deck. And I think I used 3 H plywood. I don't know what he was. I think he was cool for 316, so I'm not sure. But um, I went with 3 H. It was a little stiff. But you got to remember, every seven inches, this thing is pretty solid. You know, you only got like seven and a half inches between, uh, you know, between joists or uh, stringers. So you really isn't, you know, you really have a lot of uh, structural rigidity. But what I did was, after I finished installing cabinets and, and, and uh, the seating, what I did was I laid out 5 16 um, African mahogany, right? It was about two inches wide with quarter inch um, white oak strips. So it's kind of laid out like a teak um, deck would be, except it's mahogany and white oak. It's not, um, what did they use? Teak and holly, I guess you can buy the plywood. It's teak and holly. It pretty much resembles that, but it's African mahogany. And I gave that a couple of coats of uh, epoxy to seal it. That gets sanded, and then we'll shoot it with some uh, polyglopathane or polyurethane. And we'll, we'll, we'll get that done. But, but again, I'm jumping ahead. Anyway, so now I got this boat upright, right? I got the insides, I got a little glass, it's all stiffed. I threw a couple of bulkheads in. I threw, I threw the, the transom went in. I threw the free, I threw a bulkhead in where the cabinet, where the cabin begins. So now she's pretty stiff. So now I gotta flip this thing. So how do you flip it? I don't know, this thing has gotta easily weigh at this point at least 2,000 pounds. And you gotta remember, it's 30 feet long. So who's gonna, am I gonna lift it up? Am I gonna get three or four guys and we're gonna lift it and flip it? No, so what I did was remember, Let's go back to the 19 foot down east. So I bought a, um, I bought a trailer for the 19 foot down east, right? And when I cut the boat up and I cannibalized it and took the, I took all the hardware, I took everything off because there was nothing left. But the only thing left on that thing was the shell. I had the trailer. So I needed to make a rotisserie. And how did I make the rotisserie? I cut the trailer up. And I welded a bunch of pieces together. I bought a couple of um, um, winches off of eBay, cheap shit, not, nothing expensive, you know. But they, they were like 2,000 pound capacity. I bought two of them, two, one for the front, one for the back. Remember, I'm estimating the entire thing at this point is 2,000 pounds. And me and my brother, I got my older brother to help me. After I welded this thing up and I, I attached everything, we brought, we, we he, he, he took the front and I took the rear winch and we cranked this thing up and we lifted this thing up, right? So we lifted it up, I shored it up, I, I put a bunch of two bys under there to shore it up and then we removed the cradle that I made or the, the hull stand, if you will. And I, I removed all of that and then we flipped this thing upside down, right? And then we dropped it down on the deck and that's how I did the bottom of the hull. Now remember, I didn't take the rotisserie down, I left it, because I still gotta bring it back again. Again, this is how this guy, um, um, Tom Lathrop, with this blue jacket boat, boats, this is how he, he designed this thing and he engineered it. He engineered the building process. So I followed it, you know. But, um, and you know what, it, it makes, it kind of makes sense because, you know, once you put the floor in, once you put the sole in and, the tr and um, the string is little, you're kind of locked into the shape of the hull. You know, if you didn't have any of that, you just assembled it and flipped it, you know, this thing could, you know, I don't know, you, it, it, it could deform, you know, here and there a little bit anyway. So at least this way we know it was solid. So I flipped it over, we glassed the bottom of the boat, I sanded it, I checked everything with a straight edge. I didn't want any friggin' hooks in the boat, you know, I didn't want any, any hooks or mounds and, um, we glassed the whole bottom, sanded it all up nice and smooth. I primed it with epoxy primer. And then I, um, and then I hit it with um, bottom paint. I put the ablative bottom paint on it. Now we jacked it back up. We flipped the boat over, right? And we put the boat on stands, right? I made up, I made, um, 
I put a bunch of, uh, I, I, we shored up the bottom of the boat. Too much caffeine. We shored up the bottom of the boat. And what I did was I cut out the floor to this tent. I cut the whole floor out. I left like a foot on each side of the, of the tent, right? And we backed the trailer in, right? I took, the, I took the rotisserie out, got rid of it. We backed the trailer in, and then we put the boat on the trailer and backed the trailer into the tent. So now the boat is on the trailer. Now I'm going to complete the boat on the trailer. And I give, I give that, I give props to my son because he was the one who said, you know, why do you want to build it on, on, on horses and then try to get it on a trailer after it's all done? And that was his idea. And we went with it. And you know what? He was right. So anyway, what I did was I finished. So I got the bulkhead. I did the front cab and I did the, the superstructure on top. I, um, I made the windows, the windows, actually what I did was before I made the windows, I made the sides of the boat with the, with the window cutouts the way I wanted it. Actually, I made it, it was a little bit off and then we changed it after it was in. And then I made the top, the actual roof. I don't know what the nautical term is for a roof of a boat. I'm calling it a roof. And, um, we made it. And uh, I got. I'm, I'm going to squeeze a couple of pictures in on how I made that. I'll show you what I did there. And then um, we put the roof on top. I made the frames for the windows out of white oak. I glued them in. I covered the entire inside with white oak quarter inch plywood, and I shot it with the um, automotive grade uh, clear coat polyurethane two part. And uh, the cabinets. I installed the cabinets. I got pictures of all of that. And I installed the seating, we did the floor. And I'll show pictures of all of that and I'll show you how I made some of the stuff. How I, uh, I'll actually show how I, um, how I radius the corner, a couple of the corners on the cabinets I radius, six inch radius. And I'll show you how I did that. I'll, I'll squeeze that in, I made a video of that. So I'll, I'll cut that up and I'll squeeze, squeeze little parts of that in. And, um, the other thing is, yeah, and I put Corian tops on this thing. You want Corian tops, you know, you're gonna be out in the water. You know, what, what am I gonna do? You know, use, use wood and fill it up with, you know, cover it with uh, epoxy and then it gets, it, it, it's damp, it's dry, it's damp, it's dry. This thing starts moving, you get a crack before you know it, it's lifting. And you're better off with the, uh, with the Corian. Anyway, so that's enough for now and, um, we're gonna we're gonna stay tuned for part two. Part two is gonna be the finishing of the hull on the outside, and then once I get all of that done, then I gotta glaze it, and I still gotta I still gotta do the cabin. I haven't touched the cabin and the bathroom or the head, if you will. Again, I'm not a shipwright. I'm not a boat builder, so don't hold me to any of these. All right, I'm just a guy with a boat having a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and I hope to see you on my next uh, my next video.